How's it gaming guys? I'm Phil in the Blanks and welcome to my main event for my uh, Halloween Let's Plays this year. This is Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. Uh, actually, technically, no, it's not. This is the Japanese version of Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. This is Akumajo Densetsu. And the reason why we're playing uh, the Japanese version, I'll tell you in a second, uh, but instead I'll read this Opening to you, I've actually got the English version right here, or at least the NES version uh, in front of me. During 15th century Europe, there lived a person named Dracula. He practiced sorcery in order to create a bad world filled with evil. And that's actually what's written. That's that's how horrible the writing was for the NES, guys. <coughs> he began taking over, taking over the continent of Europe, changing countries from good to bad. The good people of Europe tried to fight off Dracula, but no one was able to survive. Finally, the Belmont family was summoned to battle Dracula's vile forces. The Belmont family has a long history of fighting evil. Even though at, the, at, the, at this point, this was actually the earliest game in the chronology. Uh, the townspeople became afraid of the Belmont's superhuman power and asked them to leave the country. Fortunately, the people found a mighty Belmont uh, called Trevor. Though he's actually not called Trevor in this game, but we'll talk about that later on. Uh, the Curse of Dracula has begun. The fate of Europe lies with Trevor. Now you can tell this isn't a super accurate translation considering in the Japanese version you can see the numbers 100, so who knows what this says? I don't speak Japanese, so ha, we'll never know. Uh, but yeah, the reason why I'm playing the Japanese version of this and not the American version the main reason, anyways, is if you can hear the music really well, I hope you can hear it somewhat, even though I'm talking and blabbing about, is that the Japanese version of this game comes with a chip inside the cartridge that allows the uh, the console to play more sound, uh, chan like have, have more sound channels at one time. It's like seven, I think. While the American uh, NES only had four. Technically had five, but only like four at a time, but, but whatever. So the sound is a lot richer in this game than it actually is in the NES version of the game. There are other differences, we'll go over them as we play, but let's go on <coughs> to the opening where we put in our name for some reason. Uh, in the Japanese version, this doesn't really matter, you just put in a name for some reason. In the American version, you can actually put in codes here, like help me, for example, we give you 10 lives. That's not a thing in the Japanese version. Weirdly enough, though, this part is almost identical in the American version. It doesn't have the glow, but the cross is there. So it's interesting that the American version actually keeps a lot of the religious symbolism in this game. But yeah, this is Trevor Belmont. I guess he's like the great, 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 great grandfather of um, Simon Belmont, uh, I guess. But you can tell he's a Belmont because he's got that, like, that covered strut. Look at that, look at that walk. Is that still a meme with uh, <laughs> with kids nowadays? I don't even know. I, I just discovered the meme recently and I thought it was really funny. I was like, this is a good, this is a good place to put it in. Why not? <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> the other reason why I'm playing the Japanese version of this game is the Japanese version's easier. Uh, it's a little bit more layered than that. Um, but basically in the American version, uh, the damage you take from enemies completely depends on the chapter that you're on. Every single thing in the chapter will take the same amount of damage uh, to you. So in, like, I think you take two hits, or two, like, little bars of life for every hit in chapter one. And, like, chapter three will go up by a bar, or something like that. In the Japanese version, every single enemy and every single, like, attack and weapon and that kind of thing takes a specific amount of damage, regardless of the, um, the chapter you're on. So the Japanese version technically starts off a little more difficult because things are taking a little bit more than just two off of you, but, uh, I want the holy water, but uh, later on in the game, it uh, it's a little easier. So it's more of a, it's just an, a more even challenge, and I'm okay with that. I'm not particularly good with classic style Castlevania games, and up until a couple days ago, I had never beaten this game ever, because I just find this really difficult. Uh, part of me was hoping that You Could Beat Video Games would do an episode on this one, so I could, like, learn some tricks, but he didn't. He might have by now, but I needed to get this recorded, so, uh, yeah, I, 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 you'll, you'll be seeing me die and get game overs a lot because we are playing this, uh, this is full fill, just, just me trying my best. <laughs> 
I did look up a couple things, obviously, uh, like some speed runs uh, and a couple boss techniques, just so I can try to get through this a little bit easier. Because again, I'm, I'm gonna have some trouble uh, at parts of this game. But uh, yeah, one of the big problems with eh, with Castlevania games is is you can have a strategy all you want with the bosses if you are not able to get there with some life and the correct. Uh, sub weapons, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, it's really difficult to uh, survive, anyways. We're gonna take some opportunity to kill some of these zombies with my holy water here. Uh, the reason why is because I think if you kill 10 enemies with uh, your sub weapon, your current sub weapon, you'll be able to get the uh, Roman numeral 2, which allows two of the sub weapons on the screen at a time. Like right now, I can only toss one, and I can't toss another one until it dissipates. But the Roman numeral 2 will allow me to toss two at a time. I don't know if I've killed enough zombies, that should be good. Uh, but after a couple candles, oh, that was weird. After a couple candles, it will appear. I don't want the axe, I want the holy water. Holy water and the boomerang, the cross boomerang, are definitely the best things that you really want in this game. Give me the, nope, that's not it. Roman numeral two. Aw, guess I didn't kill enough. Here, kill you guys. One more, ah, damn. So, yeah, hearts are ammo, like always. It's, it's always been a thing in Castlevania games. Uh, come on. Roman number two, I want it. Oh, damn. Little thing, they changed these guys to uh, flea men, the American version. And I'm getting my ass kicked. Uh, Roman number two, no, jeez. Ooh, yay, wall turkey, thank you. Uh, actually, I heard that the actual translation is supposed to be like werewolf leg. I'm like, that's kind of a cool idea, you know, eating werewolf. Yum. Ooh, there it is. Uh, oh, no, I got the stupid clock. Oh, damn it. Well, that really did not work out well for me at all. I, ah, uh, okay, well, whatever. The boss, thankfully, is not difficult in this level anyways, so even with the clock, the stupid clock weapon, uh, we'll still be fine, hopefully. We're approaching him anyways. He's, like I said, fairly easy. And besides, we're gonna die anyways at some point, and when you die, you lose your, your sub weapon, so it doesn't really matter. Just keep an eye open for either the cross or the, um... Ugh, I'd rather have the dagger. Uh, the cross or the, um... Uh, or, or the, 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 the holy water, or the, oh, the smelly perfume, like Eric Hansel likes to call it. Dagger's still good, it's a long-range attack, but, like, that's not what I want, man. So here we go, here's the first boss, who is pretty easy, to be fair. Like, my range is good here. Like, he just falls so quickly. Yeah, I got hit. I don't care. Like, there. That's so easy. It's a Castlevania game. They start out easy, but they quickly get really, 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 really difficult. Oh, something I haven't mentioned. This Castlevania game has branching paths. Uh, there are two main routes to go, and for the most part, you do either nine or ten levels before the end of the game. The first level is always the same. It's always that level. And here we get our first choice. Will we go down, which is the long way around the lake or ocean, or not the ocean, the lake around um, the area, or we go across this bridge straight to Dracula. Uh, well, up this tower anyways. We're gonna go up the tower. This is level two. Down there is level three. So, if you look up at the top, you'll see like BLK 201. Block two, um, 201 basically. Second level, first bit of it. Uh, yeah, so you, no, I don't want the clock. So, uh, there are multiple playable characters in this game. You play as Trevor, obviously, but there are also, uh, three other characters. And, uh, if you want the first playable character, Grant, he is only available, uh, to get in this level, level two. So if you want Grant, you go up here. If you don't want Grant, you skip this level completely because after we beat this level, we'll go right to level three. So this isn't technically a branching path. If you go up to two, you still have to do three. You're just either choosing whether or not you want to skip level two. Uh, so, like I said, level one... What, what, I want to know what's in there. That's my bag. Level one is always the same. Level eight, nine, and ten are also always the same. So, basically, we'll be doing the... Ah, oh, thank you. The easier path through the game, uh, which is Seifel Belnatis' uh, uh, path, basically. And once we get to level eight, we will restart, and we will do Alucard's uh, path, basically. That way we get to see all the levels... Uh, Alucard's path has a little bit of a branching thing too, so we'll still obviously do both paths as well. Uh, but it'll be fun, that way we do all the levels. I think it's like 16 or 17 full levels. Uh, so you you have to do 9, at least 9 for one playthrough, and then max 10. So, yeah. 
it's a cool idea. I do like the uh, the replayability. That's not something you saw a lot in these types of platforming games in, in the NES's life cycle, so it's pretty cool to get. Like, sure, friggin' Rescue Rangers had branching paths, but you could go back and do all the levels, so it didn't matter. This, you can, you, you don't have that opportunity. It's like you choose certain levels and you might not be able to do the other ones. This is so difficult. We're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. Oh, we didn't die. Oh. Like I said, be prepared for lots of deaths. Uh, deaths from platforming, deaths from enemies. It's just great. There's just a lot of Phil dying. It's fantastic. Everyone loves it. Let's throw some perfume. Try to see if we can get Roman numeral two. And try to see if we can avoid other um, sub weapons. I certainly don't want other sub weapons. Eh, that didn't work. Can I kill these guys with the perfume? I can if I want to aim it right, but I'm having lots of trouble doing that. So I'm just gonna not do that right now. I definitely also want to have some sub weapons for the uh, boss. Not that the boss in this one is hard. Like I said, the game starts out relatively easy. It's platforming that is uh, a giant difficult thing for me in this uh, part of the game. Ooh, ooh, I almost got knocked right down. That would have killed me. That's ooh, that's Castlevania right there for you. Get away from me, Medusa heads. At least they don't turn you into into stone like they do in some of the later games, where you have to actually wriggle your way out of the stones. It's very frustrating. More dangerous platforming. Eh. Oh, okay, well. Uh, uh, ah! Okay, I didn't think I'd actually make that. So, yay for, ooh, ooh, wall turkey? Oh, no, Roman Dumbo, yay! Well, that's awesome, don't want the axe. Actually, the axe is pretty good for this upcoming boss, but I'd still rather keep the holy water if I'm able to, so. Oh, it's so dangerous, I don't like it! I do like the way the cogs work here. So the um, the idea of like a, a clock tower has always been a big Castlevania tradition um, ever since the first one. I guess it's not the second one. The second one defies everything traditional Castlevania. I mean, it was only the second, I guess technically not the second Castlevania game if you count Vampire Killer and Haunted Mansion or whatever it's called, Haunted Castle. Uh, but the, the, the tower, the clock tower has become such a tradition. It's usually near the very end of the game. That's weird, oh geez. That's uh, usually near the very end of the game, and it still is in the very end of this game as well. It's still the, the, the last level. But I like how there's a small, easier uh, clock tower at the, uh, ooh, nope, wait it out. Thank you. A small clock tower uh, to, to do in this game. I, I just think that's a really cool idea. Like, they didn't really need to do that, but it, it's cute. All right, so we're coming, we're coming up to the boss right here, who is fairly easy. Um, Holy Water's not gonna be that much easier, but there he is. Eh. Well, I mean, I mean if I miss, that makes it harder. So it depends on what he does. He just kind of falls and then just kind of goes back up. Like, that's all he does. Depends on where he falls, of course. There we go. That's a little bit better for me, actually. Eh. There we go. Just kind of gets stuck for a little while, as you see. And dead. Yeah, dead. Whip you in the bum. So that's uh, actually not the end of level two. I mean, it kind of is, because if you get game over, you start at this point and not the beginning of, oh, sorry, I'm pressing the, not the beginning of level two. And we get Grant. Grant Dynasty, I guess is his name. Um, I think it's supposed to be Grant Dynasty. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a thief man. My, my peeps were killed by Dracula. You want to hang out? We're like, yes. So then we, oh, God, thank you, you won't regret it, and you handshake, or pinky swear, actually, it looks like there. And let's get the hell out of here, because apparently uh, this thing has, I guess he was a load-bearing boss. Yeah, uh, the bridge there gets destroyed, so hey, you thought you could beat Castlevania early? No, you can't. Let's leave this, uh, what was it called, the Tower of Untimely Death, I think. But now we go back down. It's still technically level two, but I do like that. What's fun though, press select, and now I am Grant. Now, the big difference with Grant in the American version and the Japanese version in America, he's just got this little, little shiv, little stabby. In the Japanese version, he can throw, straight up throw his uh, dagger. And that's his regular attack. So I can get the ax for him, and that's his sub weapon. And I've got a sub weapon and his ax. Isn't that great? And I can just jump down here because you can climb on walls, as you can see. He's a pretty nifty character. The big problem with him, though, is that 
He sometimes jumps too high, which can be very scary depending on what you're trying to do, because uh, he can get stuck in places, and he can climb, uh, and he can change direction in midair, and he's super fast, and his jump is very high, but he takes one more thing of damage uh, than Trevor does. Ah, so that's a little dangerous, but that's okay. Just having a good time. We're gonna stick with Grant for a little bit just because it's fun. Actually, I'm gonna see if I can just do this. Yeah, there we go, look at that. It's pretty cool. Um, he's very unique for a Castlevania character because he's so agile, and Castlevania is not known for just being able to respond well to threats through your movement. So it's, it's pretty nifty, I do like that. Um, I tend to like playing as Trevor more because he's just a Castlevania character. He's made to be played like that. Just down we go. Uh, uh, but we'll be playing as all the characters at least a little bit, just so you can at least see how different they are and that sort of thing. Because I think it's important for you guys to see that type of stuff. Uh, or else what's the point of playing the game, I guess? What's the point of playing all the roots and all that? So I do like how you can skip parts of this uh, just by falling, because we're like leaving the tower that we've already played through. So pretty nifty. Um, you do share life, I think. Um, actually, I'm not sure. Let me just switch over to Trevor there. I'm pretty sure you share life. Yeah, you do. Okay. But it's nice that I keep my holy water and my uh, Roman number two. Now, I don't know if... Just a second. Uh, I don't know. If I die with um, Grant right now, do I keep my holy water with um, with, with uh, Trevor? Because that'd be kind of nice, but I'm not sure if that's the case or not. So I don't really want to try it. Oops. Do not want to do that either. Yeah, he, it's, it's fairly easy for Grant to get stuck, so you have to be careful. Here's a perfect example, actually. Um, one, two, three. Grant's jump is too high, so you get stuck in the bricks here. So it's very easy to die at this jump, so you want to make sure that you're really taking advantage of his, his ability to climb. So, fall, fall down, fall down some more, gonna fall everywhere. Take a lot of hits, though, but we're still good. And just hold the down button. Careful. Is that it? Was that the end of the level? Yeah, there we go! I like how he walks out like that. Very cool. So, like I said, even though you went through level 2 and, and said, I don't want to do level 3, I don't want to go into the forest, you still do have to go into the forest. So, yeah. Full life. Hooray. We've got a little bit of time, so we'll keep going. Well, I, was, I guess we're going the long way, huh? Load-bearing boss took down the bridge. Technically, you actually skip a small part of the section. You'll notice we're at block 3.1 or 3.01 or whatever you want to call it. I'll switch over to, um, to Trevor. Uh, if you go straight to the woods, you actually do 3-0. Uh, oh man, this is not a good weapon at all for this part. That's okay. I like the boomerang. Oh, there we go. I'm okay with starting over with um, with uh, no room and normal if I can get the cross boomerang because it's such a good weapon to have. You gotta be careful though, these owls are dangerous. Damn. Ah, missing. Oh, I do not want that. Get away from me. So you gotta whip from afar, you don't wanna lose your really nice things. Yeah, okay, there we go. We'll do up to the little area where you, you choose, because you get another choice up here, I think. Um, so we'll do that. And. Ah, no, get away from me, no! Damn you. Oh, you went off screen, but you're still alive? That's not like a Nintendo game at all. Damn, this is, um, I'm doing really bad here. Uh, do I have the axe with you, Grant? Good, good. Let's kill a red skeleton from the stairs. Ah! Like that? No! Okay, well, I mean, whatever. It's still worth Um, the red skeletons actually do not die. You can kill them with Sypha, but they won't die normally, so you gotta get out of there. Careful here. Oof, do not want to get hit. Oof. Uh, anything over here? Oh, nothing really. Uh, you're probably back now, aren't you? Oh, no, you're not. That's nice. Probably another one. Ooh, okay. There we go. Get some easy kills here. They're right in the way. Might as well, right? Oh, nice. Yeah! Yeah! Well, I want that Roman numeral too, man. My boss is so easy. Well, not easy, but it makes them easier. Uh, oh, we really have to go down here. I wouldn't mind some, uh... Oh, okay. I guess it's going by itself. I guess this where we have to choose. Yes, it is. Okay, well, we'll make our choice next time. I'm Philip Blanks. I'll see you guys next level.
Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this episode, click that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to know when the next episode is up. If you want to support my channel, share some videos with some friends and consider supporting me on Patreon.